The Lord has done great things for us. Amen. And whereof we are glad. Amen. That to a part of the 11th month of this year. Amen. Means you will not miss your 11th hour visitation. Amen. God is rounding up this convention by turning your destiny loose. Amen. You are coming out of hiding. Amen. God is taking you to the center of the city. Amen. Your name will ring a bell anywhere you turn. Amen. The things you do with your hand will take over the marketplace. Amen. The places you go will leave a residue of your presence Amen. there. This is your time. Amen. This is your season. Amen. Nothing will cap you up or arrest your destiny. Amen. The forces of darkness will not be able to overcome your progress. Amen. Wherever they gather against you, they will discover they are actually furthering the plan of God for your life. Amen. This is your season. Amen. This is your time. Amen. Can you congratulate three people for me there? Welcome to your time. Welcome to your season. Welcome to your time. If you don't sow the seed of congratulating someone, I don't know what you want to reap. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate God and God's servants in the house for the privilege to share fellowship with us. I have been blessed. Hallelujah. There, is, there are places you go and you feel empty. And there are places you go and you feel recharged. Uh, where some, you, you think I came to minister, but I actually came to be ministered to. A few things have dropped into my spirit and you will also hear news. Amen. I said you will hear news in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that you are in the right place. Amen. You are in the right place, Amen. under a right shepherd. Amen. Anywhere the word of God is allowed to have its free course, heaven is abiding there. Amen. And God's word has taken preeminence or else you will not be here. Amen. You are a product of the word that was spoken from this altar. Amen. And the Lord will perfect that which concerns your life. Amen. Please join your hands together and help me congratulate. <clears throat> I didn't hear your clap offering. Come and say, Papa, we love you. Appreciate your sacrifice. You are not saying after me, we love you. We appreciate your sacrifice. We will not fail God. We will not fail you. Our testimony shall boost your destiny. The name of Jesus Christ. And can you thank God for this daughter of Zion? who has been a major force beside our pastor. Hallelujah. This lady is loaded. Do you know that? Out of your spiritual uh, breast, God tell me to tell you, you will yacht succor nations. He said your voice will be heard. It will take you from these shores to places you didn't imagine. He said, I have cocooned inside you the virtues that will add value to lives. Amen. So dig deep Amen. and bring it out. Amen. Your time has come. Amen. Can we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. This morning is going to be a capping up of what God has been building since Tuesday. Amen. You just must not miss this rain that is about to pour. Amen. Because you will not only be drenched, but others will be taking waters out of the abundance of the rivers of life that will be flowing through you. Amen. Sir, they will call you at the headquarters Amen. of this nation. They will seek your advice because the Lord who brought you to this land has made you a star among the strangers. They will hear your word and take counsel from your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. God bid me tell you the way he brought David out of the corner side. 
to the center of the nation is bringing you out. Amen. Your destiny in this nation will glow. Sear the spirit of the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hear that some major, major financiers, business tycoons, are emerging from this church. Amen. They are coming in shades of young ladies and young men. Amen. They are going to shake this nation financially. Amen. They are going to eradicate what they call poverty in the land. Amen. He said, because I will inoculate their mind with divine wisdom. Amen. And the hidden riches shall be exposed to them. Amen. The hidden riches in secret places shall be put in their hands. Amen. And my glory shall be seen in the land. Amen. If you believe you have a portion there, can you lift up your two hands? And say, Father, I connect. By your Holy Spirit, I connect. I connect. I receive this word from heaven. And I mysteriously connect to it. I connect to it. I reach out for my portion. I reach out for my portion. I align my mind with your word. If you say it, you can do it. Thank you, precious Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, you may not see the cloud gather. You may not feel the rain fall. He said, but this valley shall be filled with water. Amen. That is a prophecy concerning this land, Amen. concerning this church. Amen. This valley shall be filled with water. Amen. I said, this valley shall be filled with water. Amen. From here, they will speak to nations. Amen. From here, they will reach multitudes. Amen. People will gather mysteriously. Amen. A time is coming in the history of this assembly. You'll be wondering, where are the people coming from? Where are the people coming from? He said, because it will cause your light to shine and make you an attraction. He said, and eight men shall tie themselves to your apron and said, we must follow you to your God. I hear the spirit of God saying, that will be your own portion. People will look at you and beg you to take them to where you go. Receive access in the name of Jesus. I release the gift of access. I release the gift of access. I release the gift of access. In the name of Jesus. Where they have shut the door against you. Grace of access now opens the door. Take it now. In Jesus name. Let the people shout a believing amen. amen. Please take your seat as you put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. Well, I'm going to give a very um, short shot. And it's in continuation of our journey into destiny. Our journey into destiny. We said, number one, we must uproot fear. Fear is an intimidation. Fear is a poison. Fear is a killer. Until you disengage from fear, you cannot engage the fullness of your destiny. Anything you fear is lost. And living in fear is direct application for affliction. Living in fear is direct application for torture. Living in fear is direct application for torment. You want to hear more about that, pick up the CD, and it's going to help you. We also talk about how you can eject fear by the help of God. And the second thing we talked about was for you to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is the pathfinder. Any believer that is not powered by the Holy Ghost cannot have access to what the Holy Ghost can provide. And the fullness of your destiny was declared before you were formed in your mother's womb. And for your information, the Holy Ghost was there. He said, let us make man in our image. Let us. So God employed the services of the Spirit, the Son, and himself to make you a reality. Now, you can't function in that dimension without his assistance. The manufacturer of a product has a right to dictate the destiny of that product. You can't take a Pojo car or a Toyota car to a Toyota assembly plant and come out with a complaint. 
you can take it to a roadside mechanic and he will damage it for you because his own is trial by error. Let's try this, let's try that. But you can't take it to the plant that means where it was manufactured and come out with an error. So every time your life looks like an error, take it back to the plant. Every time something is not just functioning the way you desire, take it back for your information. Your desire is orchestrated by God in order to tailor your life on the path of his program and his plan. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from the Father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. So, see, you are a gift to the world. You are not an embarrassment to the world. You are not a burden to life. You are not a caricature. You are not a mistake made at a time. You are organized by heaven to come and rearrange the planet Earth. The reason we are having some challenges in our towns, cities, and villages is because people like you are not manifesting. If you showcase what you carry, there will be peace in the environment. What is the government doing? The government is not giving, God didn't give government grace to put a nation at rest. It is people like you who does it. And when we are missing here, Armageddon has arrived. The reason why there is still quietness around is because believers are still here. Now, before we leave here, we should put things right. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Spot or wrinkle. No hiccups. He's not coming for a church. If you are praying, Lord Jesus, come. He won't mind you. He's waiting for you to overcome, put things in place. He's not coming back here to be crucified. That's why you are justified. Jesus is not coming back here to be crucified. He's not coming back here to be messed up by men. That's why he justifies you. So he can be glorified when he arrives. Amen. Am I communicating with you? So you don't like what's happening around you, do something about it. Amen. Stop complaining. Do something about it. Why? It is given to you to do. Amen. So every good thought that strikes your mind, a thought of, oh, I just left school. I need a good job. That is divine. It's divinely planted. Now I've got a job, I need to get married, divinely planted. I've gotten married, I need a child, divinely planted. You see, there is no good thing from the bottomless pit. Satan can't put the right thought in your mind. So when you are thinking evil, you are an agent. Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor for me, when you are thinking evil, you are an agent. Agent of who? The evil one. Just add the, the devil. Am I communicating with you? Yes, but when you are thinking good, you are an agent. Agent of God. Amen. You see somebody weeping and something inside, compassion grew inside you on how to wipe the tears away. That's God doing something. He wants to do something to that person through you. He said, I have seen Israel suffering. I have heard their cry and I'm come down. How did he come down? He brought Moses on the scene. I'm come down. That's why you are here. That's why, if there are people in your neighborhood that can't find food, you are the reason. Hallelujah. Amen. If there are parents that can't send their children to school, it's your fault. That's why you are here. That's why, brothers and sisters, we are not in this kingdom for ourselves. We are not on this planet for ourselves. Blessing is, is already mandated. Now, to be a blessing requires for you to reorganize and align your thoughts. And that's what I want to share with us on what I call spiritual mindedness. Spiritual mindedness. As part of the things we need to understand on our journey into destiny. We must be spiritually minded. Now, the mind is a facility created by God. To help you order your steps. All right. Your mind is the factory. Where destiny is processed. Your mental attitude determines your altitude. 
what God has said will hang in the air until somebody align his thoughts in his mind to flow with him. Can two walk together except they are agreeable? Jeremiah 29 verse 11, New Living Translation. I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. So any disaster I am going through is not of God. It's not planned by God. It's not orchestrated by God. It's not arranged by God. So don't say when, when God is ready, he will change my story. He had changed it before you were born. You unfortunately find yourself in a terrible environment, but God is saying, I am not the reason. Your home or marriage are at the point of breakage. I'm not the reason. Because from the beginning, it was not so. Too much tension and argument. It was not so. I'm not the one behind your troubles. The plans of good and not for disaster is what I have for you. And why do I have these plans? To give you a future. I have these plans to give you a future. That means you have a future. Future means something that is bound to happen in the next second, the next minute, the next hour, the next day, the next month, the next year, the next decade, the next millennia. So God progressively sets your life on a consistent progression. For the path of the justified shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Hallelujah. So God is a God of progression. God does not stagnate people. He doesn't want it to be with you as it was yesterday. I know my plans. But you see, you cannot be a proof and an evidence of my plan until everything about you unites with what I'm planning. You can't be where I plan you to be if you are not where I want you to be. What I plan you to be will be frustrated if you are not where I want you to be. If you are not thinking with me, you can't arrive where I'm going. Can you hear that? Too many times we are in church, we hear all manner of things God is saying, but your mind is saying, I beg. You know, God don't do their own, no. It's just a luta continua. The struggles continue. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. Neither are my ways your ways. So if you will not unite with my thoughts, you cannot find yourself in my way. Ways talks about achievements, attainment, success, victories, triumphs, breakthroughs, winning. You can't win it until you think it. You can't be victorious there until your thought flows with there. So it is your thoughts that determines the direction of your life, not God. I shared yesterday, thieves came and put gun in my face. That's the first time in my life I saw AK-47. My wife was in the car. Four of them. Lie down now. And I smiled. Later, my wife was now asking me, what was going on in your mind? I said, the last thing I was thinking about was death. It never occurred to me that the guy can kill me. Why? Don't I have brain? I do. But I have organized these thoughts to flow in the direction I'm going. <laughs> it is not what you say that determines who I am. You got mouth? Yes. Free gift. You open it and close it the way you like. Yeah. Say what you want, but you are not talking to me. Yeah. Lie down, or I shoot you. 
And I look at his face. I said, you cannot. <laughs> My death is not in your hand. Yes. And many years ago, I studied the subject of death. And I discovered it is nothing anymore after Jesus died. He took the power from grave and took the sting. You know the meaning of sting? The poison behind an arrow. He took the sting out of death. So for a believer, it's a passage. It's a transition. It's like a, I'm no longer in Nigeria. I'm in Mombasa. Now that I'm in Mombasa, I can't be in Nigeria. So if I'm in Nigeria, I can't be in Kenya. Did you get what I'm talking about? That is how it is to us children. So there's nothing to fear. He said it came because of those who have perpetually been put their life in bondage to the thoughts of death. So I had to deal with this mind. I mean, I had to deal with this mind. I had to school my mind to flow with resurrection plan. Or else I'll be a victim, a cheap victim of satanic plans and human plans. Somebody say you are stupid. And you are fulfilling that prophecy by behaving stupidly. He said, why are you angry? He said, he called me stupid. Uh, are you stupid? Answer me now. No. So why are you misbehaving? If I say you are stupid and you look at me and say you are mad, you know what you are saying? You are saying both of us are on the same platform. When a dog meet dog, what do they do? They greet each other by barking. Boom. So when you are backing, you are a dog. You are not a god. But when he made you, he made you in his image. And he is God. So he made you a god. And since I'm not a dog, I won't back. I'll behave God. So your insult does not reduce me, does not increase me, does not shorten me, does not enlarge me, does not add to me, cannot subtract from me. It's your opinion. <laughs> May your mind be divinely inoculated today. The principal force that is keeping you limited to where you are, limited to what is happening in your hand, limited to poverty and lack, limited to affliction and frustration, the principal tool is the power of the enemy over your mind realm. Your spirit man is born again, but your mind needs adjustment. And that on a daily basis. On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For God know his people in advance. He foreknew you. He foreknew you. And he chose them to become like his son. To be conformed to the image of his only begotten son. So that his son will be the firstborn among you. Many brothers and sisters. Can you see yourself in the picture of Jesus Christ? Every time I'm reading, reading the Bible, I form pictures in my mind. I form pictures in my mind. And that's exactly how God created your mind. Every word that you hear comes to you in pictures. It is that picture that determines your response. The picture you form moves a response from you. Your response is speaking about your actions. And what you put to action is actually who you are or what you believe by reason of what you had. We hear in pictures. Hallelujah. Amen. If I say dog, what did you see? By reason of what I said. So we hear in pictures. That's why he said, cast down every negative picture. Imagination means image formations. Picture formations. If you won't cast it down, it will take you down. If you want to revoke it, cancel that negative before it is processed into original. Engage your mind with the materials that will align you with God's ordained destiny for you. Engage your mind. To engage means to put it in a gear. 
if you know how to drive a car, whether it is automatic or whatever, if you don't engage the gear, there's no, it will be making horrible noise, no motion. So where you engage your mind is the direction you are driving your life, even though you are speaking in tongues. Fornication is not a mistake. You formed a picture from who you saw, lady or a man, and something inside you began to form a picture of how to lie with her. And if you process that picture, you begin to organize how to get her. Any one of you have done it before, you understand. You will agree now. The way you are looking at me. <laughs> if God opened my eyes now, I will tell you the day you did it. <laughs> I'll just tell you the day, the time, and the place. I did it for someone before. She came and lied and lied to me. As she was lying, it's like you pull a curtain. I just saw her coming out of a bathroom with a yellow towel. <laughs> you know, sometimes pastors need help. People will come and lie to you to pray over their lie. And when nothing happens, they say it's not powerful. It's not a powerful pastor. Because God won't bless a lie. And I ask her, where are you coming from? That yellow tower is not your own. That bathroom is not your own. Where you dressed up this morning before you came to my office? Where? Uh, Daddy, I'm sorry. <laughs> For what? I don't know what came over me. I said, I know. Where your thought goes is where your leg goes. <laughs> That's why in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three, he said that they, they may be you know, found blameless by the operations of their spirit, their soul, and their body. Hallelujah. Amen. These three unite to determine your portion. Engage your mind with the materials that will align you with your God-ordained destiny. Why? Philipp Philemon chapter 1 at verse 14. He said, without your mind will I do nothing. Without your mind, I will do nothing. In other words, without your consent, I won't fulfill my plans that I think about you. I need your consent. Your consent can only come when you realize what I'm thinking and what I'm planning and unite it with what you are thinking and what you are planning. Then you have consented for me to take you to where I'm taking you. Without your mind, I will do nothing. Philemon chapter 1, verse 14. Some of you don't know that chapter, book is in the Bible. Without thy mind, I will do nothing. That is a dossier of the Lord. He said that your benefit should not be as it were of necessity. It's not by compulsion. You are not a dog. I don't need to put a chain around your neck and be dragging you where I want to go. No, I made you a free thinking agent like me. I make a choice. I have a will and I gave you same. You have a choice, you have a will. Now program your choice in line with my choice for you. I'm your manufacturer. I can't make you in the factory as a Toyota product and you will get to town and become a Mercedes. I brought you out from my crucible, my factory, as a god. You don't get to the world and become a dog. I don't back. I take command. Hello. So in February 2018, if he has shot me, I won't be here today. The conclusion that it, it failed. The plan failed. Why? I didn't flow with him. So bullet won't come out. <laughs> now after they were driving away and um, we called the police, my driver now took the other car to pursue them. When they got to a jam, a deadlock somewhere. They started shooting in the air. 
and the gun was shh, loud. Bwah, bwah, bwah. So the driver came and said, why didn't the guns answer when it was in my yard? When they got to town, pa, 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 fire and bullet were flying out to scare people away. That's how they escaped. But one of them is dead now. All I need is to anoint where he stood. I said, Holy Ghost, erase him. Erase him. He has tampered with the anointed. Wow. Erase him. Died woefully. Your destiny has been predetermined. But God requires your consent before he can perform it. Please stop working against your own self. Your environment has nothing to do with the situation that has kept you on the ground. It came, but it must pass. If it doesn't pass away, you give it room to stay. You can't stop the environment from doing what it likes. Because the devil is still the god of this world. But what you can do is to stop him from afflicting and affecting you. Your own garden of Eden is heavily secured. But it is your earthly participation that make it a reality in your lifetime. I'm challenging you. Take charge of your mind. Amen. Satan wants to drive your life in the opposite direction to your glorious destiny. If he can control your mind, he has controlled your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, he said, But if our gospel is hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost. Who are those who are lost? The one in whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. He blinded their minds. So they can't believe lest they see the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Romans 8, 5 and 7, 5 to 7. For they that are after the flesh, physical, they mind the things of the flesh. They mind. So what you mind is a product of what you keep thinking about. Your destiny is predetermined, not by your parents. None of my parents knew I was going to end up a preacher. In fact, my father wanted me to be a medical doctor. My uncle, who is my father's junior brother that I stayed with, I grew up with him, wanted me to be a medical doctor. I was doing well with all science subjects. Praise God. Fine, I passed the exam. Fine, I found myself there. Fine, but then I couldn't stay there. Why? I couldn't stand it. Towards the end of my first year, we went to visit the cadaver room. What they call cadaver is the leftover of human bodies laid on the table like an operation theater. As soon as I came around, the, the smell, smell of death, stench, filled the air. I felt like vomiting. We entered this fully air-conditioned room, and what filled my, 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 my throat was chloroform. When I saw these black structures on the table, I looked at my skin. I looked at myself, and I got afraid. And then I sat down, and lecturer stood behind me, and then took small, small axes, axe, A-X-E, small ones, and took one arm and chopped. As he chopped him, I said, yeah. <laughs> it was like it's me. <laughs> and he responded, I said, it's normal. It's normal for you to feel like that. If you don't do like that, you are not a normal human being. When you first just get exposed to this part of your journey in medical science, you feel, what is this? What is this? Fine. He said, it's normal. It's normal. So I was telling myself, it's normal. It's normal. <laughs> When he raised fingers and he pulled up, <laughs> brothers and sisters, that was the worst class I've ever attended in my life. As I'm talking to you now, I'm still feeling the way I felt that time. I became so uncomfortable. Worst of all, 
I slept. And I was seeing flying hands. The following week, the following month, it was getting worse. I told myself, I don't belong there. So I changed my course by myself. Hallelujah. I was passing exam, but my heart can't take it. I can't afflict pain, inflict pain to people. I remember one time I took my daughter to the clinic for injection. When the nurse pulled her pants and did the syringe like this, when she hit, my daughter shouted, Yeah! I look at the nurse, I say, You are wicked, and give her a slap. Wham! She said, Sir, say, You are wicked. See the way she shouted. That was the last time my wife allowed me to follow them to any hospital. <laughs> I can't inflict pain. I'll be, a, 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 I'll be killing people if I'm a medical doctor. But God has his plans. That I'm actually a medical doctor. But in another way. As a banker those days, when my staff said, sir, I have this, I want to go to the clinic. I said, fine, but come. Do you mind if I pray for you? He said, well, nobody hates prayer. Whether they are Muslims or anything, do you mind if I pray? I need your consent. I said, I pray. I won't touch you, so you won't think I put anything. Now I cause the root of that affliction. Why? This is my domain. In my territory, the devil has no right to manifest. I lose you from that sickness in Jesus' name. You go back to the hospital because that's what you want to do. Some of them on their way come back and say, what did you do to me? I wasn't a pastor. I was a medical doctor made from heaven. Amen. Did you follow what I'm talking about? Yes, so, no. I ended up here now, not because I went to a Bible school. Because he knows the thoughts and he has wired me for what he meant me to become. All I needed to do is unite my mind with his own. So I won't be mismanaging what he has packaged for glory. Like I said, you can't pick a Toyota car and take it to a, a roadside uh, bicycle mechanic. He says, are you not a mechanic? Hey, a mechanic is mechanic. So check this. He will change your toy tire to, to spoke. Bicycle spoke. Why? That's all he has to offer you. Because you are the one who brought your thing here. Is somebody learning something? My, our gospel is hidden because something blinded their minds. The God of this world blinded their minds. So they can't appreciate the good news. That can align their life to where I want them to be. So when you mind the things of the flesh, physical things, that's all you think about. When you will get the next dress, when you will get the next fang, you ladies call it finger, extended finger. Fang, I call it fang. <laughs> Praise God. My wife doesn't like me saying that. Fang, it just... God gave you a normal one. You decided to turn into an abnormal one. It now became like a claw. I was shaking members' hand, and then they, all manner of ladies were shaking my hand. Before I knew it, there was blood behind my hand. They have scratched me with their claw. Sorry. I'm not saying don't have one. I just don't have a mind for it. Praise God. Hallelujah. God gave you black skin. You don't like it. You turn into yellow. You become a yellow purple. That's why after some time, your yellow will now change to decay yellow. Why? Because it is not cream that made you. It is God who made you. And he made you beautifully and wonderfully. And beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So when the one who is ordained for you see you, you are the most beautiful person in the whole world. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes, but because you, do, you want to be accepted by more than one person, you decided to change the skin. 
so that they can accept you. But you are not made for everybody. All you need to do is to align yourself with what you are made, and then the one who can see beauty in you will locate you. Amen. Let me share this testimony. As a young pastor, 1994, the month of April, I came into full-time ministry in February 94. Now, April, I was with Papa in Rajioba, and then, you know, people come to him for counseling, but when he's not around, they will say they should see the administrator. That's me. So, this lady came in, reception, and said, somebody wants to see Papa, but I've sent her to you. When she came inside, I stood up. Why did I stand up? She looked like Inwin. <laughs> what, what do they call Inwin in, in English? <laughs> eh? A spirit, a gene. The nose was huge. The lips were huge. Each lip, one, is like thick as my thumb. They stood like that. The hands were, see I said I'm not tall. This one is not tall at all. Every finger is thicker than my own thumb. So I stood up, Jesus. She felt embarrassed. I said, I'm sorry. What can I do for you? He said, I came to pay Papa for prayer. I said, sorry, he's not around. He said, can you pray for me? I said, okay. Uh, what? Sit down. He said, sir, I'm 28. No man has asked my hand in marriage. Ah. <laughs> I look at her in my mind as a young pastor. You are thinking of marriage? I said in my mind, I won't lie to you, in my mind I said, if you are the only woman in this world, I will not marry. <laughs> you, you just pray to make heaven, you are talking of marriage. Everything is in the wrong proportion. Everything is in the wrong proportion. As I was thinking, the Holy Ghost gave me a knock. Wow. And the scripture came alive beautifully and wonderfully. Have I made you? Whew. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I said it out. Lord, I'm sorry. And now open that scripture and tell her to read it. I said, how you think determines what you attract. It is not physical qualification that fulfills destiny with God. It is scriptural and spiritual qualification. Unite your mind with what God said and begin to position yourself for the one that God has ordained to be your husband. She smiled. I prayed with her. After she left, I knelt down and said, Lord, I'm sorry for thinking bad thoughts. Watch this. Not quite five months after, this lady came back. This time, she has said, I want to see Pastor Daly. So, he brought her to my office. High heel shoe. Breathed air. With a touch of shade. Rounded glasses. And then a touch of lipstick. So I smiled. I said, welcome lady. What can I do for you? He said, oh pastor. You mean you can't recognize me? She removed the glasses. <laughs> it's not as if anything changed in the structure but how she feels about herself inside began to radiate on the outside. She releases the aura of acceptance. He said, like I came to share testimony with you. God has honored your prayers. Amen. I said, which prayer? Because it looks as if I prayed the prayer I didn't believe. 
I said, which prayer? He said, wait, sir. Went out and came back with a young man taller than her with Jemon dancing here. She looks like a ladies' man. He says, sir, that's the answered prayer. I said, he wants to marry you? He said, yes, dad. I said, praise God. I said, can you give us a chance? Stay outside. I want to talk to him. After she left, I said, come here, young man. I will curse you. you. You want to mess up this woman? What's your problem? He said, sir, we have never met. You do know me before. Why this harassment? I said, are you deceiving her? He said, ah, ah, pastor, cool down. So I sat down. She said, I know why you are saying that. Yes, sir. Why, what did I find in her? He said, but I found something in her that I can't find in any other lady I've ever met. Yeah. There's a beauty from her inside that is just right for the destiny God has in mind for me. He said, what she doesn't have in the physical structure, she has it in her inside. He said, this woman is godly. Her words are seasoned with salt. She radiates soundness of mind. In the last three months we have met, a lot of things have changed in my affairs. He said, sir, we just came to tell you we want to get married. You don't know what happened to me. I started shedding tears. I knelt down and said, Lord, I need to be born again. <laughs> Pastors don't know everything. They are just prepared vessels, walked on by God, and presented to you to show you the way through. I'll give you pastors who will feed you, not eat you. My, my eyes were watering with tears. When she came in, he said, Daddy, what's happening? He said, just... Just thanking God for your lives. I've seen a miracle. I've never seen this kind. They are married now with two children. Amen. And these children, you need to see the girl. The girl was a combination of the lady, the mother, and the man. And when God combined two extremes, he comes with a product that looks like it, it must be heaven who made this one. Enjoying themselves, sir. When this lady is serving in church with her tiny finger, hand, everybody will be looking. <laughs> but you see, the prettiest lady in church is still looking for a husband. But the one that doesn't look as if is a human being has found a husband. Have you seen that paradox? Yes, because the problem is not the devil. The problem is in your thinking. Receive grace this morning. Yeah. So if you are experiencing failure, you are experiencing stagnation, you are experiencing confusion, check what runs in your mind. Before you start looking for which arrow to shoot, first check what is running in your mind. Because without your mind, I can do nothing. Because your mind is the factory where destiny is processed into reality. Your mind must be subject to consistent renewal for your life to measure up to the mark of your glorious destiny. Consistent renewal. Don't set your mind on a negative platform. Open it up for heaven to breathe into it. Ventilate your mind with the word of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what must you do as I round up? Number one, update and upgrade your mind with quality information that are relevant to God's purpose for your life. Mind my word. Information that are what? Relevant. Relevant to God's purpose. Relevant to God's plan. I know my thought 
for you they are thoughts of good not of evil to give you a future so what am i feeding into my mind in order to process the future that god has in mind i must check out everything that is negative and never allow information that will corrupt it your mind is susceptible to corruption so i must guard it by watching the information that proceed into it praise god Tomorrow is 4th of November. Tomorrow, my wife and I will be 30 years old in marriage. <laughs> now, watch this. We came from two extremes. I'm from a traditional home because my father is a traditional man. He believes in deities. He practices it. Until I got born again, they do all this, yeah, 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 yeah. What they call it? Incisions. We eat concussions. My father will say it is not for evil, it's for your protection. Because there are evil people all over the place. When I got born again, I refused and I stopped. And I made sure he stopped. Now he has five wives, one died with 23 official children. So I say official, means he has some children that are not from the wives in the house. My father really spread. <laughs> she multiplied. I mean, he multiplied. So I have half brothers, some I know they are mothers, some I don't know they are mothers. But we are many. It's a war zone. So that's the word. It, was, it became the survivor of the fittest. When it's time to eat, they put a bowl at the center. The, all of you with the same age group from different mothers, you sit around the plate and dive. <laughs> that, you see, up till now, I don't eat meat when I'm eating food. I finish eating food and then eat meat later. <laughs> Why? If you eat meat, they'll finish the food. So you put, and don't leave the meat in the plate. Put it in your left hand. And rush. It doesn't take me two minutes to eat until I met my wife. Even yam. You eat yam, you only slice it once and swallow or else the rest will finish. So when you now finish and you want to drink water, you cry. <laughs> One gulp of water and pain. You shred. Yay! Because the water is trying to push down what you didn't masticate. That's how I grew up. Now, this lady is from a polished Christian home where you wash your hand when you come in from town before touching anything in the house. You wake up 5 a.m. and pray to God, worship God, and then you pray over the food before you eat it. <laughs> Order. Where I come from? The other side. When we were cutting, we had all the chorus we could quarrel. When we are going out, I, I move very fast. Then she's there. I said, move now. What? She won't mind me. I said, I said move oh, or you meet me there. Then later she will say, a, a lady doesn't walk like a bricklayer. I said, are you insulting me? So, I'm just talking. And my wife talks. Thank God she talks. <laughs> if she joined me, we would never have gotten married. I went to the school of a reorientation by God connecting me to her. My destiny would not have been fulfilled to this point if I married somebody else. She was my lost rib. 
she fits in to the departments of my life that I need adjustments. And she was willing to do her job without feeling anything. I told her, I said, before we go too far, um, this is my family. My father is not educated. My mother is not educated. We are 23 in the family. She said, ha. Ah. I said, ha, ah, that's it. Oh. I can't erase my past. They are the battalion. And for your information, I'm the first son. They are the battalion behind me. In case you don't like it, let's break it now so the person can go his way. She said, I just say her because I was surprised. One man with 23 children, how did he manage? I said, ask him. <laughs> the truth is this today, by my wife's positive, godly influence, we have peace. Amen. You hardly can tell whether we are same mother or just same father. When my mom passed on and we went to visit my auntie was weeping, she said, my joy is that God gave me another mother to look after my inheritance. He said, these wives, they are evil. If you leave me with them, I will soon join my real wife. But my mom is the first wife. These ones is what they will eat they are looking for. I don't know which devil brought them my way. But the other mother I'm talking about is your wife. This is the old lorry of this clan. This is the angel God sent to my family to bring restoration to my home. My wife was sobbing. And that's the truth. The people we don't talk to each other before. Now, they came visiting our home and stay one week, two weeks. My mom will come to any station where I am under the sun by my wife's arrangement. When my mother died and we were doing wake keep, a woman came on the scene and said she is mama's prayer, she was mama's prayer partner. He said, Mama is always talking about the daughter she has, but she never gave birth to. He said, she could do, there is no daughter that came from her bowels that did half of what she has done for her life. I'm sharing a testimony of a woman. Are you in that picture? Because if you say your husband is a devil, that's why you are there as an angel. Let your light overcome that darkness. Amen. She taught me how to be polite. In our home, we shout. I mean, normal conversation is a shout. You fight. Leave me alone. Get out of my life. Get out. You are stupid. You are mad. Go and meet your mother. <laughs> when we go to eat, I finish my food. I will say, who is chasing you? I said, nobody. <laughs> but why must I allow flies to dance around my food? She said, there's no fly here. I said, suppose you are, you are a banker and they don't send, bring you for a lunch. I said, yes. When I get there, I tell them I finish and I get up. She said, but that's not correct. Slow down. Chew it, chew it first before you swallow. <laughs> Now, over the years, when she was celebrating my 50th birthday, she said, since I met my husband, he has never reminded me of any wrong thing I did yesterday, I did last year, I did last month. He said, this guy created the atmosphere for me to find who I am in God. Amen. I was shocked. Is she talking about me? <laughs> Something happened to me. My mind was renewed. Amen. Stop giving reasons why you must do wrong in the name of that's how I am. That's not how you are. That's how the devil wants to make you think you are. 
And what you present to the public is the way they will respond to you. Receive grace. Amen. Update your mind with quality information that is relevant. What do you need to change? He said, as we behold him as in a glass, we are what? We are changed. So there's something I need to change. So if I need to change, I must behold what will mandate that change. I must not be careless with the way I run my life. I should be sensitive to what I need to change so that I can present to the public what will make them appreciate my purpose. And what do I behold? He said, from a child, you have known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise. And wisdom is of the mind. Wisdom simply means knowing what to do and getting it done to get the desired result you long for. That's wisdom. And so, I must change what is here if it is chaining where I'm going. If this is an obstruction to where I'm going, I should not say that's how I am. I can change it. I can change the way I think. So I will change the way I present myself and then be able to attract to me what rightfully will organize me for his destiny as programmed for me. Are you seeing something this morning? Every one of us, including this one standing here, needs to keep changing. I don't know everything. But any new thing I know, I set to with it until it affects the way I think. When it affects the way I think, I discover it always affects the kind of result I get. The result is always getting better. The result is always getting better. Because the part of the justified is as a shining light. What's the meaning of justification? It means to be acceptable for the next phase. To be positioned and accepted for the next phase. That is to say, God had to do something to reposition me to attract the glory that he has in mind. So he called me. When he called me out of the decadence, he now justified me. Now, we are all products of justification. I mean, I say we are still in the process of justification. Because your glorification is the ultimate. But for the glory to happen... You must be in the environment of justification, which begins by exposing yourself to the way God thinks about you, accepting the way he thinks about you, forming a picture in your mind of how he thinks about you that will motivate your response, your feelings towards what he thinks, and then attract positive action. So the things that you are not doing are actually the things you have had, but you have not accepted in your mind. Your mind didn't accept it. Pastor, you won't believe that there are people in this church who don't pay tight. Not because they don't have money. They have not accepted it. They had, they, they found it in the Bible, but they didn't accept it in their mind. And since you don't accept it, you can give 1,001 reasons why you cannot do it. So anytime there is a good in front of you to be done, and you won't find yourself doing it, instead, you are giving reasons. That's why he said, without your mind, I'll do nothing. I need your consent. I need your consent to make you a reflection of what I have made of you. I need your consent. I lose grace in this house. From a child, you have known the Holy Scripture. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Able to make you wise. For all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine means lifestyle. Profitable to adopt a lifestyle. Profitable to make you adopt a lifestyle. I told my wife one day, I said, you see, relax yourself. You know why? There's no devil that can make me sleep with another woman. He said, I said, not because I'm afraid of you. No, but I saw a concept in the word of God that we kill what he has in mind for me if I engage in that. I said, that reasoning is what does not allow me to look at another girl with an aim of sending her to bed. He said, come, let us reason together. Your mind is your reasoning faculty. That's the factory room where you, where you cook tomorrow. That's where you cook tomorrow. Praise God. So what I sit down to think about today determines what I'm cooking up for tomorrow. 
So when you see a lady leaving half her breast or all her breasts in public and they're wearing a skirt that is showing her underwears, that's the way she thinks. She thinks about herself that until she's naked, nobody can appreciate her beauty. That's a thought line. And so when you are telling them, why are you dressing like this? He thinks you are mad. He thinks, you, are you all right? Because a madman thinks he's more sane than sane men. You remember the story in Luke chapter 8? That naked, mad fellow that Jesus healed. And the following day they came and saw him seated with Jesus Christ, properly clothed and in his right mind. That's the way the Bible put it. <laughs> he was mad, and then now he's seated with Jesus, properly clothed and in his right mind. So it was a wrong mind. It was a mind, but it was in his wrong mind when he was naked and was laughing at everybody who was wearing clothes. So when you see somebody who is naked in town, the scriptures can't be broken. He's not in his right mind. So you don't fight them. You just help them with an information that will send them to their reasoning faculty so they can decide by themselves, by reasoning with God, that look, I'm a queen. I'm a princess. How many of you watched the last wedding in the royal house in uh, um, England? What's his name? Harry or is he? Did you watch the? I saw a clip of it. It was my wife that caught my attention. He said, look at everybody that was at that wedding, a lady. None of them wore anything that does not run their neck. Not even the princess that was getting married. She's an American. In America, they can walk naked in the road. It's not an issue. I've lived there before. So in, in summer, they just put one strap around their breast and one strap. It's a strap. It's not <laughs> around there. And, and then they go anywhere in the public. Now, if you look at the great people that were invited for the wedding, they gave them a dress code. You don't come to the palace as a lady without appearing like a queen. That is people who don't know God. How much more me, who is from heaven, made a princess to reign on the earth. Did you get what I'm talking about? So it's the mindset. The issue is not that's, that's fashion. No, that's your choice based on your mindset. So when you see a man putting earring, that's not a problem. But it's mindset. That I want to be a combination of a man and a woman. I hope I'm not spoiling your religion here. Hallelujah. So unite your thoughts with God's purpose. Unite your thoughts with God's plan. Unite your thoughts with God's provisions. And that will form a strong force between you and God that will mandate your destiny to appear. Look at Abraham, Genesis 13. Lift up your eyes from where you are and look. As far as you can see, it's as far you will drag to yourself. God had to help Abraham to see differently, to think differently, so he can actualize his purpose in Abraham. God had to help Gideon to think differently before he can see himself defeating the enemy nation that was harassing his country. Pondering, ponder, ponder your actions, ponder your thoughts, ponder. Ask yourself, where is this thing going to lead me to? He said, think on these things. Give yourself completely to them. For that's where your profiting will appear to men. Your profitability in life is linked to your ability to think with God, who is the donor of life. I can't be united in my mind with the donor of life 
and be a manifestation of every negative thing in life. There's no problem with where you are, but you can come out of the trap. That's why number three says, don't trap your life in the opinions of people about you. Don't trap your life in the opinion. I trap my life. How many of you are here on Friday evening? I told the story of my life. I trapped my life in my little negative thoughts about me. I cheated myself of opportunities because I was in a trap. Your mind can trap you. Many times we blame everybody else except ourselves. We trap ourselves by limiting who God says we are because we won't find out. You won't read. And you won't go to the environment where you can be rightfully thought that this is the right way to think. When my mom got born again, she is purely illiterate. She's never stepped into any classroom in her life. But she will always be in church. Suddenly, I heard her speaking in tongues. And I asked her, how did you get baptized? He said, you always talk about it. And when you are speaking there, I will tell God, it did turn on my own form for me. For me to me. I mean, that language my son is speaking, give me my portion. And she got it. She has appetite for scriptures. She can't read, she can't write. But anyone she hears, she won't allow it to leave her mind. She did something one day that shocked me. I was looking for my bunch of keys. I wanted to go out. And usually when I come back, my children collect my key and they do like they are driving. So I thought it's one of those days that they have placed my key somewhere. So I called them. Come, 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 come. Where is my key? And he said, Daddy, I didn't touch your key. He said, like, look, go and look for Okay, when you touch it last, where did you put it when you finish? My mom now came. He said, why are you harassing these children? Are you not the one who taught us that the Holy Ghost knows everything? Ask him now. If Holy Ghost knows everything, he should know where your key is. Ah, I felt embarrassed. I'm a pastor. But this illiterate believer is telling me what I should know to do. And truly, truly, I left her, went to my room. I said, Holy Spirit, my mom is correct. Too. <laughs> Where actually is this key? So Suddenly, my mind went somewhere. And I went there, and the key is there. I said, that's what I should have done before. But this woman who cannot read or write, but keeps the word of God in her mind, is able to tap into the functionality of the spirit of grace. Can you imagine? And yet we come to church speaking tongues, but we won't spend time to sit down and think along. The things you hear and you don't think with does not last in your system. It is what you think with that actually lasts with you and forms your actions. What you think with. So think with God's word. That's the meaning of meditation. Think with God's word. And that's the habit I grew up with. As I found the word, I keep thinking with it until I see the practicality of application. The practicality of application. If my wife and I, in spite of our bad and I mean, different backgrounds, can arrive at 30 years of stress-free marriage, she's still my best friend till tomorrow. There's nothing we don't talk about. Did you hear what I'm talking about? I mean, nothing we don't talk, no, nothing we don't talk about. If I'm not going to talk, she will initiate it. She knows me to a point of knowing when to, where to press the button. I know her, I can make her do what she doesn't like doing. Why? Knowledge. Thinking along. Husbands love your wife. And I ask God, how? He said, as Christ loved the church. I said, how did Christ love the church? That set me thinking. It set me on search. So I started looking for how, how did Jesus demonstrate love for the church? Because that is the level at which Christ is expecting me to love my wife. So I need to know how he did it. When I saw what he did, I listed them out. I said, God, is it possible for a man to do this? And God told me, will God tell you what he has not packaged you to do? If he says, love your wife, you have the facility to love. So just apply your, your heart to it. You are thinking like that because of where you are coming from. 
Now think like this because of where you are going. If you don't think like this, where you want to go, you will truncate yourself. You will frustrate yourself. You will humiliate yourself. You will shamify yourself. If you think like that, you will not get to what I'm saying here. And if you don't arrive what I'm saying here and practice it, you won't get to where you are going there. Can you see? So I have to now kneel down and ask God for grace. And started applying myself. Make mistakes, reapply. Make another mistake, reapply. Just keep applying. Boy, I can be very angry. I used to pride myself. I said, no nonsense, man. When I get angry, you run. You run. There was one day I was so angry that I carried my own TV and broke it. After I broke the TV, I now asked myself, why did you now do that one? So you have to look for money to buy another one. May this anger not kill you. How did it leave me? I saw in the Bible. Anger lies in the heart of a fool. You know what I did? I closed that page. <laughs> that statement hit my chest. So I closed the page. Fool. What a fool. So I tried to read another place. I, I wasn't concentrating again. All I was hearing is fool. Fool. So I closed the Bible. Say in Jesus' name, amen. But that day was the worst day of my life. As soon as I sit down and I'm not doing anything, I'll be hearing, fool. <laughs> fool. Fool. I lost appetite. When I got to my wife knew something was wrong. He said, honey, what is it? Is it your boss again? I said, this one, not be boss. Not me. <laughs> I didn't know I'm a fool. He said, who told you you are a fool? I said, I am a fool. He said, no, you can't be. I said, I am a fool. <laughs> it's not that I like to be. God said, I'm a fool. This anger. He said, but I've been telling you, I've been praying for I said, God has answered your prayer. So I went on a fast and started searching for the meaning of foolishness and looking for the effect of foolishness. That's reasoning with God. I sat down, fool. Who is a fool according to God's perspective? What is the effect of foolishness according to God's perspective? And I now saw the, the direction my life was going. And I said, but that's not where I want to go. So cast down this imagination. Revoke this power of evil. And then gradually, I came out with a decision. After thinking, a decision must be arrived. I came out with a decision how never to give expression to, to anger. It was a labor I engaged in for a few months. Now, walk on your head. I'll just be smiling. That means I change me by exposing me to the right materials. So when you see great men and you are wondering, it's a gift. No. It is a gift that they worked upon that produced the result. Gift on its own achieves nothing. You are a great man. Oh. Amen. You are a great woman. Oh. Amen. But the way you are thinking doesn't make you look like one. So work on that. Amen. Don't trap your life in the opinions of people. Or else you will discover you are manifesting their prophecy. The only vote you need to make your destiny happen is your own vote. Finally, take practical and committed steps in the direction of what you are seeing in the word of God. Receive grace. Amen. Practical and committed. Practical, committed. Commit to yourself. I'm going to make something special out of me. I may not have what others have, but I have something I can work on that others will appreciate in me. I don't have everything, but I have something. So what I have is enough to make me a star. What I have is enough to make a center of attraction. What I have is enough to bring me a turn around experience. What I have is enough. Stop looking everywhere. All you need is inside you. Work on it. And come out with the special you. You know something? We are waiting for you. The world is waiting for your manifestation. He said that the creation is groaning up to today. Waiting for the manifestation of. If you are a son of God, rise up on your feet. Lift up your two hands. Lord, help me.
Help me. Help me. To rejuvenate my mind. There is something about me. That the world is waiting to see. Send me help. To change me. The name of Jesus. Put your right hand on your forehead. Father. The name of Jesus Christ. I stand today in the authority of that name. As a privileged servant of heaven. And I judge evil. I judge the works of evil. I judge the agents of evil. Every force from hell that wants to corrupt the minds of these saints of God. I curse your activity. I disapprove of your presence. And I command you to be cast out now. In the name of Jesus. That thought of death won't kill you. That thought of stagnation loses power over you. That thought of sin goodness loses grip over your life. That thought of poverty loses power over your life. Now receive grace for spiritual obedience. Receive grace for spiritual obedience. Receive grace for spiritual obedience. Be free from all captivity. Be loose from every incapacitation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I release you into a godly life. I release you into the limelight. I lose your star to begin to shine. I lose your destiny to begin to glow. I lose your destiny to begin to happen. I command the best in you to be brought forth into life. I lose grace for you to evolve. 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 You are a king. You are a queen. Evolve. You are here to reign. Evolve. 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 Come out with your brand new person. Come out with your true identity. Come out with your true personality. Come out with your true graces and gifts. Come out with your true color. In the name of Jesus. Wherever the arrow is coming from, it goes back to sender. Your destiny is released from satanic incarceration. Glory of heaven will shine upon you. Very soon, your name will ring a bell in town. Shout aloud, amen, if you believe. Put your hands together for the Lord.